So you've watched the first video on the Fox One Shape Gonzalez cane, and I'm going to make two more videos using other shapes and cane just to to show the fidelity and the integrity of this process that again, regardless of your shape or cane, um, this process, these principles when applied, help us to create a reed that vibrates very easily and finishes very easily. So now I'm gonna move on to this Bonanza cane. And I can honestly say I have not even played on this cane. This was given to me, it's well over a decade old. It feels very heavy, but, um, so I might be taking a risk here, but it's kind of fun that we're just gonna see how this finishes. So my first process, of course, you want to subdivide that reed into three equal zones. I'm just eyeing this. I'm, I'm actually probably a little bit high, but get close enough to three equal zones. And my first place to remove cane is in zone one. And I want to bring in those first crows. Oh, let me crow it first just to see. Okay. Yeah. It feels really heavy. So. Here we go. Let me switch my holding mandrel. So using a knife or a file, I think for this, because it's a heavier profile, I'm going to um, use my file. And I'm just going straight across that reed. I'm not worrying about the heart. I'm not worrying about the spine. I'm not spending extra time in the corners. Just going straight across, straight across. Just getting off cane so we can release those top two crows or those top two vibrations. And of course with the file, this goes a lot faster than with the knife. Either work just fine. And you'll see me kind of spinning into the corners a little bit. I don't know, maybe that's just a force of habit, but really you can just, you can just work this straight as I have said. Okay, so I have thin zone one. Still very, very tight in, uh, on that vibration. So for my own integrity, let me just see how thick this is. I probably should have started with that. Yeah, I'm at 40. 50 on that side. Let me start with this side and take a bit more off. Again, I'm spinning onto those corners. Of course, we do want those corners to be a little bit thinner so that we get that proper aperture opening. It's nice and balanced and collapses all at the same rate. Okay, good. So now I hear all three crows. They're not free by any means, but I'm, I'm getting all of them. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna move down to zone one and just thin the entire reed. And I'm gonna use this file again. I do the left side, the right side, I kind of rotate off onto those corners. And I'm gonna lightly go up the center. So I'm using different, different amounts of pressure. Let me move closer here. So left side. Kind of spinning off onto that corner. Right side. then go right up the center, lightly, lightly. Okay. Good, and we hear all the crows now have lowered in pitch, so that's a good sign as well. Now that aperture is really, really quite open. So as I look at it too, I can see that I could definitely do some rounding of the tube as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my forming mandrel, and my pliers. I'm just going to crimp the whole tube. And then I'll come back and close that aperture up a little bit. Good, still looking nice and balanced from top to bottom, side to side. I might have a slightly heavier blade here. You can see where it's kind of pushing down the corners on the bottom side here. This might be a little heavier, but nothing I'm worried about. <laughs> ah, there we go. So now we're starting to get that the freeness of the crows. <laughs> that feels very nice. Let me just check if you see where we are here. And the tip is 35, 35. Again, I'm not, I do not go under 20 with this style of reed making. So I know I still can take more cane off, but I can also just kind of see where this is sitting. So let's try these on bassoons. All right, so starting with the Moose Mom bassoon. So initially, it seems totally fine. So a little on the low side, but that's okay. That can be easily remedied. Pretty resistant still in that bottom octave on my soft dynamics. No surprise there. But again, I have spent only a few minutes with this read, and I already know this is going to turn into a great read. I mean, I look at that aperture. Again, I can see it's a little bit heavier on this side. Um, but the vibrations are all there. I mean, I could actually stop with this read right now and say, end of day one, and then tomorrow I'll play it again and just kind of sand it out and free up some more vibrations. Um, but let's go ahead and spend some more time with it right now. So... With what I'm hearing, I now want to spend some more time in the back. I want to free up the bottom octave or that third crow. So I'm going to go right along this collar. Now, I want to be clear. When we take cane out of the back of a reed, we are not defining the collar. We are removing cane from zone three to free up the vibrations of your bottom octave. If as a byproduct of that, your collar becomes defined fantastic but the goal is not to define the collar just to define the collar the goal is to remove cane that is too heavy in the back of the reed and then of course make sure that you're blending forward at this point i am going to avoid the spine as i go up i'm not afraid to go over it right here as I free up this zone three, but I'm not gonna go forward in the middle of the spine. I'll, I'll blend up on the sides, but again, so I'll go right straight across and I'll blend up from the sides, but I'm not going to go straight up the spine right now. Oh, listen to that crow. That's a happy crow. I feel excited about this read. I'm excited to play a bassoon. <laughs> Let's play the bassoons again. Okay, so definitely the pitch has dropped on this now. I'm playing on the Musman, um, but I love the vibration. And I could probably cinch up that intonation by um, just tightening up the first wire a little bit more. I could trim the tip a little shorter, but I'm, I'm not going to. And also, I know it's November in Idaho. This reed's going to harden up again tomorrow, so I don't think I want to make the reed any shorter at this point. Just maybe let it sit. <laughs> So this read obviously 
obviously has different sound characteristics based on its shape and its cane, but the reed itself is vibrating just as it should. It's a different um, kind of set of timbres and colors, but it's going to turn into the best version of itself. So I'm gonna call it good for this um, Bonanza cane. And what I will do the next day will be to double check that pitch to see if I do actually need to make the reed shorter. I doubt that I will. I might cinch up this top wire just a little bit, very carefully. Um, and then otherwise just kind of maybe take some more cane off this one side that's just a hair heavier and then just free up a few more vibrations. But again, this I know fundamentally is gonna turn into a really, really fine reed.